So Stephen Prinz is our next speaker. I can't skip the bio. <laughs> you might already know this information, but Stephen Prinz is the owner and chief conservator at Stephen Prinz and Company, specializing in, in the conservation and restoration of paintings in Santa Fe, New Mexico. He received his undergraduate degrees in chemistry and combined fine arts from Oberlin College in 1977. He studied conservation, specializing in paintings conservation at the Conservation Center at the Institute of Fine Arts at NYU, or I assume it was at NYU. Doesn't say that. Um, in, in that year, he joined the staff of the Rocky Mountain Regional Conservation Center in Denver, Colorado, where he worked until moving to, San, until moving to Santa Fe until in 1985. As a painting conservator in private practice, he and his staff have been providing conservation and restoration services to museums, governmental agencies, and other institutional collections, as well as private collectors and members of the trade for more than 30 years. His talk today is entitled, On the Closure of Tears Using 3M Command Adhesive Strips. Well, I thank you for that kind introduction. It's a sad fact of life, especially for private conservators, that from time to time we encounter extremely uh, unfortunate damage to paintings. This is, I'm going to use this painting as an example uh, to demonstrate a method of tear repair that we've developed in the studio over the last five years or so. And uh, the painting itself is a fairly large acrylic on canvas. It measures 40 by 96 inches by Dan Dominga, a Native American artist who lives in Santa Fe. It was impacted by a forklift and before the, f in a crate, before the uh, impact could uh, burst the canvas, it put the canvas under so much tension that it broke the finger jointed stretcher bar to the right of the damage as you see it from the reverse. And there you see it in raking light. And there's a detail of the break in the stretcher bar. As you can see it broke along a finger joint that was probably defective from its origin. And so the first step in treating the painting, oh, and I, sorry. So this is a detail of the larger tear of the two tears. It's about 12 inches long. The gap in the, un, uh, in the distorted canvas was over a half an inch at its widest spot. And when the stretcher bar deflected from the tension, it also put so much tension on the corner that the canvas burst in the corner and also, as you can see, ruptured the paint and ground. So the first step in treatment was just to straighten the stretcher bar, which we did with a steel angle iron on the far side of the painting and slowly clamping it until the bar was straight and securing the bar, which you, which you can see at the side with a, an aluminum angle extrusion. So that got the canvas generally back in plane. And I hope you can see it. From here, the, these slides don't look that clear. But you can see that the tear, although it's got a lot of disorganization and disintegration of the fabric, it actually, the tear is closed up quite a bit just from alleviating the deformations in the canvas. So we went from, let's see if this is right, from that. Oh, there's a slide missing here. So this, this is the. Uh, tear after the stretcher bar has been straightened and you can see that it's much narrower, that the gap is much smaller than it was before. But the real concern as a conservator is how do you get from this state to this state, which uh, this is farther along in the treatment. In fact, the reweaving on the canvas is done at this point. But the way I work, the front of the painting has to be at this point before you can complete the reweaving because it, it just as important as restoring the original structure of the fabric as best as possible. Ultimately, the painting's gonna be viewed from the front, so what's important is that all the paint and ground fragments are realigned properly before the mend is completed. And, oh, I was supposed to ask this question. How do you get from here to here? And the answer I'm gonna to propose today is 3M command strips. 
So lots of, uh, most of the audience is probably familiar with 3M command strips. They're uh, a, from a common commercial product. They are based on a rubber adhesive on an elastic plastic carrier. Uh, the, the technology is proprietary, but there are analogs in other countries. Um, and it, it's used in a lot of applications in various contexts where it's desirable to have a readily reversible adhesive that doesn't do any damage to the substrate or the adherent and doesn't leave any residue of adhesive behind. And the 3M command strips are really quite remarkable in this respect. Um, and so this isn't the first time that one would propose to use uh, a pressure sensitive elastic adhesive in conservation. It's actually various elastic surgical tapes are used by object, objects conservators uh, in the closure or securing of repairs when you want to put tension across a, a broken piece of, of a ceramic or some other kind of more solid object. Uh, the nice thing about 3M command strips is there is no stress on either the substrate or the adherent in the reversal because you're not peeling anything. And where objects conservators can put uh, elastic surgical tape on a porcelain surface, which is pretty uh, sturdy, it's not a great idea to try to peel things off of surfaces of paintings or even off of the fabric, uh, the canvas on the reverse. It can lead to loss of material um, and damage, as I'm sure you can all imagine if you're not personally familiar. So these are just a couple of slides uh, to demonstrate the elongation, the re reversal of a tab, the pulling on the tab and the reversal of the adhesive. And I thought after I did this I should have folded the paper over so you could see that there's nothing on either the paper or the gator foam that was the mock-up for this demonstration. Well, this is not only the first time that it's been rec that a, an elastic adhesive, uh, pressure sensitive tape has been suggested for conservation use. In fact, the use of the German analog of the command strip uh, technology was promoted by uh, Winifred Heiber uh, 30 years ago, and he used it to attach things to the backs of canvas, traction devices that he used with various mechanical systems for doing similar things, to put tension across a gaping tear to bring the tear together, to bring closure to tears. Unfortunately, I couldn't secure any photographs of Hiber's demonstrations where you can actually see his TESA. This is the German equivalent of the 3M strips. But once I learned about what Hiber was doing, and I was playing around with what I intuited his technology might be, because at that point his work hadn't been published. Um, it occurred to me that rather than just using the 3M products to attach something else that you would mechanically pull on, why not take advantage of the elastic properties of the command strips themselves to apply the tension across the tear? And um, I did do a few experiments, but being my, uh, it's in my nature to be inquisitive and experimental and maybe a little reckless. I had a, an 8 by 18 foot painting in the studio that had a 6 inch tear in it, and I had to work on that vertically um, on its stretcher, and I thought, well, you know, this is an old tear that had been repaired in the past, probably in Italy. It was repaired, it was about a quarter of an inch wide. It had been repaired basically by just sticking gesso into the tear and letting that be both an adhesive and a filler and then trying as best they could to cosmetically disguise the damage from the front. So this work of mine, my research, coincided with the point at which I had taken off the fill and was ready to try to close this tear and had no idea how I was going to do it. So I thought, well, why not try the command strips? It had my first demonstration was amazing because I had uh, taken a command strip and stretched it out between two tabourets in my studio, and it had sufficient tensile strength to actually pull two pieces of furniture together. So I was pretty, I was pretty confident that the, the, the engineering requirements were there. So this is an example of my first experiment, practical experiment on a real painting. And 
at that point, I hadn't figured out exactly how to work with the material. So what you can see from this photograph is on the left, where the tabs were initially attached to the canvas, they've, stayed, they've kept their dimensionality. The tabs are the full width of its original dimensions. Once I started stretching it, I got the tension that I needed, but I lost the adhesive properties of the strip. So that's why there are secondary vertical strips. Those are actually my points of, of adhesion. And so to release this, I had to pull the secondary tabs and release the primary tabs, then pull the primary tabs and release them from the canvas. Well, while I was working with this, I had you know one aha moment and one lucky day shopping in the right store, and I discovered clear uh, command strips. So these have a number of advantages. Obviously, the fact that they're transparent means you can watch the progress of your closure. You can also do manipulations underneath the strip to improve the quality of your mend or even rearrange fragments of paint and ground on the painted surface. And this is the obverse of the same damage. And now you can see small mylar tabs have been attached to the uh, command strips before they've been deployed so that that's preserving their dimensional integrity and their adhesive properties at the points where they're attached to the painting. The little hourglass translucent sections in the center is where the strips are under tension. So basically, you have a little tractor between the two pieces of mylar pulling the canvas together. And you can actually see, and this is a common phenomenon in uh, tear closure, that the closure of the tear, especially when they've lasted for so long, is creating dimples at the top and the bottom from the effects of the elongation of the, well, actually, the contraction of the canvas over a long period of time. Um, so the command strips come in three different sizes or packaging. Uh, small, which medium, which are the ones we've come to favor in the studio. We use these pretty routinely, both for tractors, as I, I will refer to them, and for statters. And to explain the difference, you saw the tractors in application. The statters are the same basic uh, unit, except there's no gap between the two pieces of mylar. And so instead of using it to put traction and bring the ends of the tape together, I just use those once you've got a closure and you need to hold it while you're working on the back of the painting. You just want to keep something static with what you've accomplished, then you use the statters. And you'll see some examples of that when we go back into the treatment photographs. Uh, they also come in these assortment packages, which are nice because they have larger strips, which we don't use very often, but you'll see an example in a few minutes. They're very helpful to have around when you need them. And here's the preparation of a, a sheet three wide of the medium strips. Remove the release paper from one sheet of uh, strips, and then Align with one end, it doesn't matter which one you do first, you lie a strip or a, a one-inch one strip of mylar across the, the sheet. And we'll just do this real quickly. You smooth it down and push out any entrapped air. Another strip is applied adjacent to the first strip, and you can leave a gap of varying size if it's desirable. If you have a wider gap in your tear. You may want to start out with a little wider gap between the mylar because you don't want to put too much tension on it. You want to kind of approach these repairs gradually. Um, same thing, put pressure, enough pressure to set down the strip and extrude any air, and then trim off any excess from the sides. And you end up, sorry, this is actually, they come in different size sheets depending on the, the, the packaging that you get them in. So this photograph is actually for a four wide. But you have two strips of mylar attached on one adhesive side of the sheet of command strips. Is everybody following so far? OK. So now we're going to see a mock-up and the deployment of the strips in detail. So this is a, a canvas that I have in the studio laying around demonstrating a, a stretcher design. And I thought I would sacrifice it for the purposes of this presentation. So I just took a, a razor blade and cut a diagonal tear in it. And you can see that the tear is almost a quarter of an inch. It's not a very long tear. It's not even three inches uh, long.
But the tension on the canvas was enough to open up the tear almost a quarter of an inch. So you take your command strip. Here's one of the prepared strips. Peel back the remaining uh, release paper. Peel it back halfway until you're at the gap where the tractor will fold readily. And then set, it, set down the uh, exposed side onto the canvas. Put a, a touch on it for a few seconds just to get it situated. Fold the whole tractor back on itself. And then apply pressure for the required 30 seconds to affect uh, a stable bond. And I fold, I've come to fold it over like this because that time that you spend putting extra pressure on the leading edge where the gap's going to be uh, minimizes the amount that the elongation is going to extend back underneath your mylar backing. Then with your finger in place to hold the, uh, the side that's already in situ, you just put tension on the other side and draw it out put pressure on it to attach it, hold it for 30 seconds, and then you repeat this process along the length of the tear. And now you can see already there's enough tension on the canvas that it's about cut the gap down in, in about half. And what's interesting about the way these work, I did this demonstration according to Hyber's methods, which are to start your traction in the center. His theory is that there's like a Gaussian curve of distortion in the canvas. If you start at the center, um, by the time you get to the edges, the threads that are sort of splayed out like this are going to have been drawn back into uh, parallel alignment with each other, and then you won't get that pucker. It very seldom works out that way. Um, but the next thing you do is, I, the next thing I do is I stand the canvas up so that it's not resting on any surface, and there's very little weight from the canvas itself resisting the traction and then you let the traction do its thing overnight. And if you're lucky, you come in in the morning and the 3M fairies have closed up your tear. <laughs> well, in fact, you're not often that lucky. Oh, well, let's review quickly what's going on here. Here's a schematic diagram of a cross section of one of the tractors deployed. At the top, let me see, oh, it's right here. Is it, there it is. So you can see this is the, the two black lines on the top. Can you all hear me still? Yeah. Two black lines on the top are the mylar polyester film. Underneath them is the command strip. Here's the tear. And this is the zone of elongation where I first attached this side of the strip. And then I pulled on this side of the strip to elongate and affect the tension. And this just sort of shows the physics of it. First side attached, tension on the strip this way. Because of the elasticity of the carrier, you end up with contraction across the gap of the tear. And now we'll, I'll just show you a quick example of the application to the painting we saw at the beginning of the talk. So it's important before you start to pre-treat the back. Um, when we do this, we'll do any as much of the reweaving that we can where the fabric's disintegrated and we'll size and realign all the threads that are frayed and uh, broken on the back. So now you can see that this has had a, a, a considerable amount of pretreatment, and all the threads that would have been fuzzy little nubs are now look like little shark's teeth. So that when you bring the tear together, they're not going to be butting up into each other and shoving fibers out into the front of the painting and whatnot. So you put the uh, tractors on. Oh. I should also note that before you start to work on the, with these tractors, obviously on the painted surface, you want to do sufficient tests to make sure that the attachment of the paint and ground to the canvas is sufficient to take this kind of stress, that the integrity of the ground and the paint films likewise can take any stresses that are going to be applied either from the traction of the closing of the tear or the elongation of the tab in its removal. And the, even in a fairly stable painting system like this, we still had a lot of little fragments of paint and ground that got detached in the course of the damage. So all of those are moved back into place. And in this case, you can see that they are secured with little mini facings. That's what those little gray things are along the edges of the tear. So the command strips are deployed. This is a nice shot here because when I let go, 
can you actually see the tension? So when you work from the ends towards the center, you get a compounding effect of the tension across the tear with each tractor that you add. So the first tractor goes down and doesn't do very much. The tractor that goes next to it is adding additional forces to the previous one. So as you go on, it's kind of closing up behind you as you proceed. And the other nice thing about them is that you can work in multiple directions so that you can affect translation as well as closure when the tear is not aligned laterally. And this is what I ended up with in about a, uh, an hour of work setting this up. Um, and you can't see that you can probably, if you remember the original condition of the tear, it's already closed. But the painting was put upright and left overnight. And the next day, there's a little bit of improvement, but not very much. So in fact, in this instance, we had to repeat this process three times in the course of the tear repair. And eventually, this is the final setup of the traction system. And this is while the reweaving and thread to thread repair is being completed on the back of the painting. And so when we're done with the mend on the back and we take the tractors off, this is what we're faced with for our restoration. It's pretty daunting. Um, here's the corner of the painting. Same thing. We initially put tractors across the ruptured paint and ground to try to close that up. Once we had uh, straightened out the stretcher bar, once we took it off of the stretcher, we were able to get much more closure on the painted surface. And here are some tractors in place. And you can see again that it's an odd network of cracking. So the tractors are applied at different angles to accommodate for the angle. So that these are all at right angles to the fissures that they're closing. And there's after that. And OK, now I'm going to run really quickly through our current modus operandi for production. Uh, we prepare our one inch strips in bulk. So this is a stack of five or six sheets of, of the mylar. We use two mil mylar. Um, and I use tri-square rulers because they're conveniently one inch thick. They're heavy steel, so they're very convenient for this kind of repetitive work. Slide your sheet down to butt up against one ruler. Put another ruler on top, cut it, and you have a one inch strip. In this case, we got like six one inch strips. And you end up with a pile of strips. Now I use the same ruler, and I'll line up the sheets of uh, command strips five wide. Using the uh, ruler as a template, I'll slide the mylar off the edge of the ruler so it's also aligned with the ends of the command strips lay it down, hold it in place for a moment, apply the second one, aligning the two ends of the mylar so that they are almost abutted with each other. Lay it down, smooth the whole thing, trim the edges, cut the strips up, and when you're done, you have a box of strips, which you then keep in the studio on hand for use whenever you need them. It's very convenient to make them in bulk and keep them uh, ready for use. So now I'm going to go really quickly through the reversal. I'm sorry, I'm going to go a little bit over. Uh, so this is the example of one of the large tractors on the back of that slit that I made. I'm not going to spend time uh, repairing this tear, but this gives you an, op an opportunity to see how one would use a statter. So that command strip is going to hold the tear closed while I'm pulling off the, uh, the tractors on the front for demonstration purposes. So these guys elongate a lot. So I was taking these pictures and I realized, oh heck, my finger's already out of the frame. But I think you should be able to barely see right here, the mylar is moving along with the command strip elongation. And now it's up there at the edge of the frame. And now zap, it pulls the the, through the rest of the mylar right off of the painting and out of the way. And here's a, another example in the treatment of that damage in the corner. You can see that uh, at the bottom is a tractor still, but the top two tabs are actually statters. They're holding the previously satisfactory alignment of the cracks in place 
while I'm trying to improve this crack down at the bottom. But if you watch as this progresses, you'll see, let me go back for a minute, the front of adhesion is right there, and you can see the optical effect that it has when it releases. That's still adhered, this is released. So you can watch that front through the mylar as it progresses so that you can control the progress of your reversal. And should I read all this stuff for you guys? Uh, so the advantages of this system are it's simple use, it's straightforward and expeditious. Oh, well, I'll get to it because it's at the bottom here. I forgot to mention something that's really important. Low risk of damage to supporting fabric or painted surface when properly deployed. Low impact, no adhesive residue, no use of solvents or heat. Low tech exploits common, readily available materials. No additional mechanical devices are required and nothing else needs to be attached to the painting to affect the necessary tension. And it's local, all attachments are approximate to the damage that you're repairing. Treatment is generally carried out with the canvas in situ on its stretcher without affecting the handling characteristics of the painting so that it can be readily reversed as work alternates from front and back. Uh, and it has a low profile. And that's something I should have mentioned when we were showing the repair of the actual painting. Um, in Hiber's methods and other similar methods, you have some fairly substantial attachments on the back of the canvas, and you have a mechanical device somehow attached to the stretcher or working frame of the painting. And because these have such a low profile, they're less than uh, eight, less than 10 mil thick in their total thickness. Um, you can lay the painting down on them and work on the reverse while you have your tractors on the front or vice versa. If you want to put your tractors on the canvas, you can put a support under that and still work very comfortably without significant deformation on the front of the painting. And I find that very useful. So um, some of the disadvantages are that these systems, Hiber himself was a little bit dubious about using the system because he promotes a lot of moisture treatment once the tractors are in place. And, in, and the original 3M command strips don't have good tolerance of moisture. Moisture causes adhesion, adhesive failure. Um, it also fails under relatively low temperature, so you can't use Beva on one side if you've got a, a 3M strip on the other. Um, but there may be a solution for that in stock. In the last year or so, 3M's come out with clear outdoor strips, which are supposed to be moisture and UV resistant and have a higher tolerance for temperature. Occasionally, uh, a tab will not reverse correctly. You'll pull on the tab and the carrier will break. But in, I have yet to have an application where that caused or resulted in any damage to the painting because you can reverse the tab very easily with tacking iron at very low temperatures. And even if you already have uh, thermoplastic adhesives in place that are in common use in conservation, they're not affected by the temperatures you need to reverse the strip. Um, people have expressed concerns about adhesive residue left on the surface. I have yet to, to have that happen in my personal experience. People are concerned about migration of materials from the adhesive into the substrates. I have yet to see that happen on a painting. The only time I've had it happen is reversing a strip that was on gator foam, and the gator foam had a, a modest stain on the paper surface where the adhesive had been. Um, and then damage to the substrate, uh, either the painted surface or the verso, is always a risk whenever you're using any kind of adhesive system. So I kind of put the onus on anybody who wants to adopt this technology to do proper testing and carry out proper consolidation before you deploy any of these in an actual practical situation. And as it says at the bottom, may not be suitable for use in all instances, conservator judgment required. <laughs> and here's a couple of sites online. If you want to get your phones out, this is the time to snap your pictures. This is my primary source, the binding source, which is a 3M certified distributor. Uh, you can get them a little cheaper unless you're buying them in set, lots of 72 or more from some super saver office supply places. So that's the end of my talk. Here's a reminder of what it looked like before. 
There it is under traction at the finalization of the tear repair. And you know, once you get these 3M strips in your studio, you're gonna find so many applications for them. And I mean for temporary edge lining on paintings, for holding paper repairs in place, for stacking up materials that you don't wanna be slipping around when you're making a support for something. So even in this, in the Naminga project, we had to make a temporary panel support for the painting while it was being repaired. We made that out of gator foam with a wooden strainer on the back. And how did we attach the wooden strainer? With 3M command strips. And it took all the stress of tension and tacking the canvas throughout the treatment without failure. And when we were done, we were able to take it apart and we now have a full sheet of gator foam and all those sticks we can use for something else in the studio. So I thank you very much. I apologize for going over time. I hope you're all happy with the, the presentation. Oh, I know why I was. So maybe you just one quick question, if anyone has one, to so can move on. Just a quick comment that I'm wondering if uh, 3M VHB tape, the, the clear uh, type, is basically the same thing, but just in a roll. And so I, I'd like to do some tests with that because I think with the mylar masking that you're using, it could act in the same way. It just doesn't have a tab. The um, v, I don't know. I don't know it by that name, but I do know that they make command strips in roll form. Mm -hmm. And uh, we talked about this. Yeah. The only downside to that is that the the form you get it in as the strips is so convenient because it has a pull tab that has no adhesive on it. Exactly. If you use the tape, you have to put a backing on it where you want to have a tab or it's going to stick and, and it's just going to elongate itself. You need something to start your reversal process with in every application. So I will take, oh, I have samples at the back table where Chris is sitting so everybody can get a sheet to take home, maybe more if Yay. you act quickly. And, um, and you can ask me more questions after the meeting. Thank it, you for your It's so wonderful to see you create some, a new idea like that. Thank you.